recent government report has revealed that more than 36,000 Afghan evacuees lack permanent legal residency to remain in this country. All of them were or are set to be resettled here in the U.S. Over 40 percent of the refugees were airlifted from Afghanistan last year after the Taliban seized control. Their departure from their country represents the largest American evacuation and resettlement operation since 1975. The evacuees remain in legal limbo unless Congress acts or they obtain an immigration benefit like asylum. The problem is a backlog of more than 400,000 applications constraints the U.S. asylum program. Joining us now for more on this is CBS News immigration reporter Camilo Montano Galvez. Uh, Camilo, I know you wrote an article on the CBS News website about this. According to the latest uh, Department of Homeland Security statistics, more than 76,000 Afghan evacuees have been brought to the U.S. But why do more than 36,000 of them still lack uh, a direct pathway to permanent legal status? Hi, Jerika and Tony. Due to the sudden collapse of the Afghan government last summer and the chaotic evacuations that followed, the Biden administration actually bypassed the traditional refugee process, which usually takes a couple years to complete, to resettle tens of thousands of Afghan evacuees who were determined by the U.S. to be at risk of being persecuted or harmed in other ways by the Taliban. Instead, the Biden administration has used this humanitarian legal authority known as parole to process these Afghans and to authorize their entry. But unlike refugee status, Jerika, parole does not provide a pathway to permanent legal status here in the U.S. It just allows these evacuees to work and live here legally for two years. So it does not provide any sort of legalization for its recipients. We know, according to this report that we obtained, that about 36,000 of these evacuees are eligible for special immigrant visas because of the assistance that they or their family members provided to the U.S. during the 20-year war in Afghanistan. But we also know, according to this report, that another 36,000 evacuees do not have any pathway currently to obtain permanent residency here in the U.S. And as you mentioned, they will likely remain in legal limbo unless Congress moves to legalize them. So what is technically the legal status of the other 40,000 refugees? So the vast majority of these Afghans, Tariqa, were paroled into the country. Some did not need to be paroled because they were already permanent U.S. residents or other types of visa holders. Uh, but we know that the 36,000 Af Afghan evacuees who, do who do have a pathway to legal status, rather, are eligible, according to the U.S. government, for special okay. immigrant visas. This is a program for Afghans, Tarika, who directly assisted U.S. forces during the war in Afghanistan, and it benefits not just recipients, but also their spouses and children. So these recipients of these visas will eventually become U.S. permanent residents as, as a result of this program, but the others don't have the same avenue to secure legal status. Camillo, you, you touched on some of this, but I want to ask you directly. There's something called the Afghan Adjustment Act, uh, and it's in Congress right now. However, it's stalled in Congress. What would that act do, uh, and why is it stalled? Yeah, Tony, so the Afghan Adjustment Act, which has not been introduced in Congress yet, would allow most of these evacuees to directly apply for green cards or permanent residency here in the U.S., bypassing any of these other programs like the asylum program. So they would be automatically eligible to apply for a green card. It is a legalization program, and it would resolve a lot of these legal questions that surround the evacuation and would resolve, obviously, the legal limbo that many of these uh, evacuees currently find themselves in. But Democrats have not been able to, Tony, uh, get enough support from congressional Republicans uh, to bypass the 60-vote threshold in the Senate that is needed for this type of legislation to pass. But did you say at the top it hasn't even been introduced? No, it, it has not. So there's no sponsor at all? Uh, there are there is a, a push to include a provision that would do the same uh, thing as the Afghan Adjustment Act in spending uh, bills, uh, but a standalone 
Afghan Adjustment Act has not been introduced according to refugee uh, experts. And Camillo, to hear you say that there were Republicans that are, that are making it tough to possibly get this through is interesting just because you had Democrats and Republicans agreeing shortly after this withdrawal uh, that those who served this country in the interest of this mm -hmm. country should get those protections. What happens if the legislation is not passed? What happens to those Afghan evacuees? Well, evacuees who are not eligible for special immigrant visas will likely have to seek asylum, Jerika, but there are many problems with that. The U.S. asylum program currently has a backlog of more than 400,000 pending applications that have not been resolved, and this number has been growing since 2012. We also know that some of these Afghans could lose their asylum cases, and that could make them eligible to be placed in deportation proceedings. But on the other hand, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement has not carried out a deportation flight to Afghanistan since November of 2020, so it is unclear what will happen to those who are rejected uh, in their asylum applications. So again, um, our advocates for refugees would argue that all of these legal questions would be resolved by the Afghan Adjustment Act. But so far, we have seen no concrete movement in Congress uh, to pass this bill. Wow, it's very complicated, and we know that it will take some time. Camilo Montoya-Galvez, we thank you for your reporting.